Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're going to keep going in our series with uh, systems of linear inequalities. And in, t uh, in this video, we're going to talk about linear programming problems. Now, a linear programming problem, it consists of a linear objective function. So I've underlined that already. And we'll talk about that in a second. But to be maximized or minimized subject to certain constraints in the form of linear equations or inequalities. So right here, oops, right here, these are our constraints. All right, now these constraints are what make a solution set. So if we were to graph this uh, system of linear, inequ uh, wow, linear inequalities, we would get a shaded region. So let's go ahead and do that now. If you're not exactly sure what you're supposed to do, just go watch uh, one of the previous videos on graphing systems of inequalities. So now that we've graphed them, and again, notice that we have uh, an equal sign on the inequality, which means that all my lines are solid. We have to find the shaded region. Now, this is the region that satisfies all of these inequalities. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and shade it, which is this. There we go. This region down here. OK, so let's see if I can. There we go. A little faster. So that's our region down there. This is our solution set. So. What is an objective function? So an objective function, uh, right up here, say something like 2x plus y. What I want is I want to figure out what point in my solution set will make this as large as possible. That's where that maximize comes from, or minimized. It depends on what the problem is asking. But let's just focus on the maximized for right now. So what point in this region will make this as large as possible? Now, one more time. This solution set consists of the shaded region that we have in here, plus any point that's on the boundary of the shaded region. Because of the type of inequality we have, we're allowed to be on the boundary. So let's take a look at some examples here. Uh, well, actually, let's label some of these points. So this right here, that is uh, 0, 100. This down here, that's 90, 0. OK, that's, that's good enough, because none of these other points are in the shaded region. So let's try, let's try this one right here. So that's 2 times 0 plus 100, because y is 100. You get 100. OK, doesn't really mean anything. Uh, so let's try another point. Uh, how about 90, 0? So 2 times 90 plus, well, 0. And that's 180. OK, let's pick another point. Um, say right in here, that this could be the point 50-50. OK, so 50-50. Uh, so that's going to be p equals 2 times 50 plus 50. So that's 150. So so far, it looks like you know this one is as large as possible. Uh, but let's let's try another one here. So let's erase that. Uh, here's another point. Okay, this corner right here. That's the point 4884. So let's see what happens when we plug that into our objective function. So we get two times 48 plus 84, and that equals also 180. Okay, so it looks like that point gives me an uh, or makes the objective function 180. But there's a lot of points, infinitely many points, and you're not going to check them all. So we need a way to figure out what point on the line, the boundary, or in the shaded region will make this as large as possible. So that's going to bring us to our theorem, theorem, which I'm going to call the corner point theorem. OK, the corner point theorem is, uh, is right here. So a linear programming problem, if a linear programming problem has a solution then it must occur at a corner point of the solution set. So this is, a, this is huge. Now, be very careful in the uh, right here. It says, if it has a solution, it must be at a corner. It doesn't mean that if it, if it has corners, then one of them has to be a solution. That's not the right way of thinking of it. It just means that if there is one, then it has to be at a corner. Um, now, there's a little bit of um, a change here. Now, if the objective function is optimized at two adjacent corners. 
then the objective function is optimized at every point connecting the two corners. So not just as a corner, um, the maximum or minimum, but every point that connects those two corners. Now this isn't going to happen very often, but it's something that's stated in the theorem and I wanted to show you. Okay, so we'll spend the, the next five minutes uh, finishing up this example. So this is actually a, a new example. So what we're going to do is we're going to maximize this expression right here, subjected to these constraints. So let's go ahead and pull out a graph. Graph the two lines that we have up here. So we have, uh, we got the x plus y less than or equal to 4, and then the 2x plus y less than or equal to 5. So let's graph those two lines. Now we just have to find the shaded region. So let's take a look at x plus y less than or equal to 4. That would be this line right here. So let's see, if we plug in the origin, because again, plug in the origin if you need a point to check. Uh, so we got 0 plus 0, is that less than or equal to 4? Yeah, it is. So we're going to shade towards the origin. And then let's check the next line. So again, let's just plug in the origin. We get 2 times 0, which is 0, which, and then plus 0. Is that less than or equal to 5? So 0 less than or equal to 5, and that is also true. So this line, we're going to be shading towards the origin as well. And then this last part up here says, all right, where do, wherever your shaded regions overlap, make sure that it's in the first quadrant. So notice that all of this, this all counts right now, because you can see that with these two lines, this is the area that we would shade. But this says restrict to the first quadrant, so we're actually only in here. So I'll go, let me go ahead and shade this in. Okay, now that we've shaded it in, the next step in the corner point theorem was that if there's going to be a solution, then it has to be at one of the corners. Now, I didn't mention this, uh, so I guess it's a good, uh, good enough point as any. If your region is bounded, then P has a maximum and a minimum. Because um, I didn't really mention this before, but you're not always guaranteed a max or min. You are definitely guaranteed a max or min, when you have this setup and your setup and your region, let me say the solution set is bounded. Now bounded means that your region is not, there's no shading up out forever. You know, if I were to shade all of this out here, that's not bounded. But this is, this is bounded. So if your region is bounded, then you're guaranteed a max and min. I'm looking for the max. So I know that we have one. So let's go ahead and identify the corners. Uh, some of them are easier than others. So right here, this looks like 1, 2, 3. That's the point 0, 4. Uh, down here, that's a corner. That's 0, 0. Okay, right here, so it's 1, 2, and a half. So that's, I'll just say 2.5, 0. And now this one, that's the tricky one. Um, so here's the way we're going to do this. I'm going to label this the point Q. Now, how are we going to find point Q? Well, you can guess, but that's going to take a while. So here's what you're going to do instead. We are going to solve this system. Now, why this system? Well, where is point Q? Q is an intersection between two lines. Now, how did we find the intersection of two lines? We solved a system of equations. So we're going to go ahead and solve this. Um, it looks like we can do this very quickly with the uh, addition method. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll multiply the first equation by negative 1. So if I do that, I'll get negative x minus y equals negative 4. And I'm not going to do anything to the second equation. So that's 2x plus y equals 5. So notice now that the y's will cancel. And then you'll get negative x plus 2x. That's just x. Negative 4 plus 5. That's just 1. So x is 1. Go and plug in x equals 1 into any of these equations, like this one right here. You'll see that y has to equal 3. So does that, that works for the first equation. Does it work for the second? Well, 2 times x, which is 2 times 1, uh, plus 3. So that's 2 plus 3. That's 5. All right. So q is the point 1, 3. So now that I have all my corners, we can then check each corner 
and figure out which one is the max. I'm going to scroll over to the right and then, oh, something's over there. Um, this is what you're going to do. You're going to put a line and kind of like a T table. And on the left hand side, you're going to put your corners. And on the right hand side, you're going to put your objective function, which is two, uh, oops, sorry, just x plus 2y. All right, so let's label our corners. We have uh, 0, 0, 0, 4, 1, 3, and 2.5, 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug that into our objective function. So here we're going to get 0 plus 2 times 0. That's just 0. Here we're going to get 0 plus 2 times 4. That's 8. This is 1 plus 2 times 3. So that's 7. And then this is uh, 2.5 plus 2 times 0, which is 2.5. So taking a look at this, where is your maximum? And hopefully you can see it, but the maximum is right here. Now, which what if your question is the max, what is the max? Is it is it 0, 4, or is it 8? Okay, so let's come down here. I'm going to uh, write out a max of 8. That's your maximum when x equals 0 and y equals 4. And that's how you do a linear programming problem. So now we have the case where your region is unbounded. We got to talk about that and then we'll do some word problems so any comments please leave them and i'll see you in the next video